At the Barcelona pre-season test, Formula 1's 2022 cars were driven in anger for the first time and it did not take long for teams to encounter a strange issue. Red Bull boss Christian Horner was among those who expressed concern about the new phenomenon. So what challenges were revealed during the pre-season test and how will teams adjust their strategy? Let's find out. The shift from overbody downforce to a ground effect philosophy is a significant change for the upcoming F1 season. This means that downforce is primarily generated by airflow beneath the car, sucking it down to the ground. However, as a result of the philosophy, the car's natural frequency can cause resonance through the chassis, which can be identified by the car bouncing or porpoising down the straight. This was especially evident on the second day of pre-season testing at the Circuit de Barcelona Catalunya, and Ferrari team principal Mattia Binotto admitted that getting to grips with it is an intensive learning process. I think that most of us at least underestimated the problem. On track, we're bouncing more than expected. We knew certainly that with the ground floor situation, it would have been different. It's through a learning process, how long it can take to address it or to solve it. I think that solving it can be quite straightforward. Optimizing the performance, it should not be a compromise, but you should try to avoid any bouncing by getting the most of the performance of the car. That could be a less easy exercise. I'm pretty sure that at some stage, each team will get to the solution. How long it will take, I think that the ones that get there sooner will have an advantage at the start to the season. In an interview with media at the Circuit de Barcelona Catalunya, Christian Horner was yet another person expressing concern over the phenomenon, but he believes that fixes can be implemented. We've got a lot of data, we've done a lot of laps, and you're learning about how the ground effect is affecting the cars. You can see the porpoising is an issue for most teams, so it's a matter of understanding it. However, Red Bull benefits from the experience of their technical chief Adrian Newey, who faced the same porpoising issue at the start of his F1 career in the 1980s. Horner believes that experience is especially important now, because teams have little time to address newly discovered issues. That's the benefit of experience, and he has plenty of it. All of this is well and good, but what exactly is porpoising, and what causes it? The concept of using the car's floor to generate significant amounts of downforce is not new. F1 teams began to better understand the potential of ground effect aerodynamics in the late 1970s and early 1980s, resulting in a sudden increase in cornering performance, but also problems similar to those encountered by teams during testing this year. As the car becomes fully loaded with massive amounts of downforce, it pushes down on its suspension, putting the floor in danger of coming into contact with the track and stalling the airflow underneath. Now, the sudden loss of downforce caused by the stalling floor causes the car to lift back up on its suspension, allowing the floor to resume working and forcing the car back down. This can be caused by bumps or by the car simply running at a very low ride height, but once it begins, it results in strange visuals of the car bouncing up and down on the straight before the driver hits the brakes, knocking off significant speed and allowing the airflow under the car to reconnect and return to normal. It is avoidable by running less extreme setups, but teams naturally want to chase lower ride heights because they should produce more downforce. Teams were aware that it could happen, but none expected it to be as severe or as frequent as it has been. Another issue for teams is that porpoising cannot be easily replicated on the simulator or in the wind tunnel, so track data is now even more important. Horner said much to that effect, but he also mentioned that there are tools available to simulate the phenomenon. I think there are still certain tools that we can use that can recreate it. With the data that we're collecting off the car as well, it gives you an understanding, and good old Flovis paint. There's plenty of that going on on the cars at the moment. Horner understands that the trick will be to recover lost downforce by overcoming the porpoising effect while maintaining speed. However, Horner warns that if teams are unable to resolve the issue, it may become a safety issue. The teams need to get it under control before we end up at circuits like Azerbaijan or some of the very high speed circuits. I think it's going to be worse in Bahrain than here and Saudi Arabia could be an issue as well. Horner believes that porpoising was possibly overlooked during the development of F1's new generation of cars and he also points to increase weight, with nearly 50 kilograms added to the 2022 machines compared to last year. The cars are a fair bit heavier. I think every team is struggling to get to the weight limit from what I understand. I think it's an unintended consequence, but on the positive side, the reports from drivers are that when following the wake of another car, you're less disturbed than you were last year. Certainly, Max felt that there was the ability to follow more closely and less interrupted compared with the 2021 car. So I think you have to take that as a positive to suggest there'll be more overtaking and more racing. 
According to the results of the test, Red Bull appear to be one of the teams that remained on top following the extensive rule changes. Max Verstappen admitted that he was unable to complete all of his planned runs during the final morning of the pre-season test, but the driver remained optimistic about the RB18's potential. Everything worked well in the running we got and the car felt good, but our morning was somewhat interrupted by a number of red flags across the session so we couldn't compete all of our planned programme. We just continued from what I did on day one and I think that was the most important objective for Barcelona. What is positive is that the car is running smoothly. I don't pay attention to the lap times just yet. I'll look into that when we get into Q3 in Bahrain. I just focus on doing a lot of laps and nailing down every single aspect of the car. I really enjoyed driving the RB18 this week. It has a nice stable balance and I think it looks cool as well so it's good to jump into. With the number one on his card this year, Verstappen has left no doubt about his desire to win the 2022 title. Sebastian Vettel was the last driver to have this honour as he sported the championship winning number on his Red Bull in 2014. I want to discuss the marked influence his driver's success has had on the team. I mean, sticking that number one on the car after all the pain that we went through last year, the fight that it was in 2021, and now the fight is to make sure we retain it on the car. It's just energised everyone in the team. You can see a spring in everybody's step, and it gives people confidence as well, which is such an important thing in any sport, which is not to have arrogance, but confidence, and I think that runs through the organisation. Nonetheless, the team's success should not blind them, and they will undoubtedly work just as hard, if not harder than they did in 2021. While Christian Horner expects Mercedes to remain his team's top contender, he sees Ferrari F1 and McLaren F1 stepping up this season. You want to see the best drivers in the world fighting wheel to wheel, and I think Ferrari could be in there this year. McLaren looking strong, so you might have a few candidates, and don't forget George Russell. I think he's going to be a key component in this championship as well. Another consideration is Verstappen's Mexican teammate Sergio Perez, who took over the RB18 for the final afternoon in Spain and set a slightly faster time than Verstappen, finishing third fastest overall. Perez, like his teammate, was pleased with the progress the team made with the RB18 during the three days of testing in Barcelona, but he will be looking for more when testing resumes in Bahrain. I think we have a good baseline and good potential. It's obviously early days, but I'm really hopeful we will make some good steps before Bahrain and keep progressing with all the information we're going to gather from Barcelona. It's important to keep learning from my driving and the way I'm adapting to the car and my team and then what the best way will be to maximise that. I think this season the challenge will be about maximising the whole weekend under the new regulations. Overall, Red Bull is upbeat as the second pre-season test approaches, but the team completed 358 laps over the weekend, not that impressive when compared with Ferrari's 439, which means they will undoubtedly be under pressure with Bahrain testing just around the corner. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel, and don't forget to click the bell button to be notified of future videos. Please leave your thoughts in the comment section below. So, what are your thoughts on this new porpoising phenomenon? Will it continue to afflict some teams at the first Grand Prix? Red Bull hasn't been particularly impressive, but they are optimistic. Is this reassuring or a sign of things to come? We'd love to hear your thoughts.